Welcome and thank you for your interest in the first ever Open Text Solex Partner Expo. Hosted by the network of Open Text Solution Extension Partners. Welcome and thank you for attending our Solex Expo, the first ever independent virtual conference showcasing OpenTech solution extensions. My name is Sean Murphy, Director of Sales and Marketing for Cassia Content Management, a proud member of the OT Solex Partners Group. Cassia has been an OpenTech solution extension or Solex partner since 2011. We are fully endorsed by OpenText as a third-party software development company under the Silver Technology Partner Program, and our enhancement modules are listed on OpenText's application marketplace. This demonstration will also include the Virgo add-on by Access Information Systems. Access offers a complete suite of information management solutions to address your records and document needs, covering the entire information lifecycle. From file cabinets to cloud, imaging projects to day-forward scanning, retention and privacy regulatory frameworks, and secure disposition destructions of physical media, Access is your end-to-end -end provider for protecting, managing, and governing your corporate information. In our first segment, Brendan Reed will demonstrate information governance made reliable, trustworthy, and easy with Virgo by Access. For over 20 years, Brendan has been facing the corporate knowledge management challenge from multiple perspectives as a user, trainer, vendor, and analyst. He has brought his early experience working with leading European institutions like the UK Archives and European Investment Bank back to his native Canada. Welcome to our demonstration today, where we're starting with the Virgo cloud retention solution. What we're looking at right now is the browser view of Virgo, it operates in any modern browser. It's a tab oriented and we'll go through all these tabs today. Right now we're at the record series and we're looking at a sample retention schedule that's going to take us through our recall case study. Uh, this is uh, out of the quality and customer safety function. We've got five different retention rules, different years, different trigger dates, and a description which I can read when I hover. All the columns in Virgo are configurable. I can drag and drop them. I can change the width. Um, I can remove, I can add more. Uh, or if I need something offline, I can also create a report in uh, one of several formats. We're going to start, though, on the repositories tab, because in addition to the retention schedule, we also want to know where the records are located. And here we've listed several applications, business applications, where we typically find records. Uh, including open text content server. Let's just open content server. We can see we have some metadata on the left hand side. There's a content management system. In our case, it's records capable because we're using the records management module, uh, which also means it's the repository of record for certain record types. I'll just show you how easy it is to add metadata. This is the production system, so I'm going to select that and say save. So any of this information on the left you can change. What we're seeing on the right is the related information coming from other tabs. We can see one of the official records, notice yes here, that are meant to be stored in content server is the part 573 safety recall form. We're going to look at one of those when we switch over to content server. This content type is associated with the retention rule quality 500 uh, national highway recalls. And it's got a five year rule. And then we can hover over and get the full description. 
Nobody's uh, left a private comment, but if I needed to make a comment on this, this is where I do it. And like all the tabs, the bottom right is the audit trail with the user and the before and after values. So let's go ahead and click into our retention schedule. Now in the detailed view, we automatically moved over from the repositories tab to the record series tab by using these internal links. Uh, there's the metadata we have for this retention schedule, but it does go quite a bit deeper if you also have security information, formatting, location, privacy, and who the uh, information owners are, or who the approvers are. There's the audit trail again on the right-hand side. And for the record series at the top is we see the defining uh, reten uh, regulatory requirements. So in this case, it's CFR part 573-8, uh, five years after reported is the retention requirement for here. And on the left, that's where we see the official uh, content type, which in this case happens to be named after uh, the citation. It comes from 573. So that's why those numbers are repeated. So I'm just going to click into the citation because uh, it's really the main benefit of Virgo that uh, by storing this in cloud, by having a living retention schedule that can be constantly updated and then published uh, to employees, uh, we know we're always up to date with the regulations of the day. So here's information that's extracted out of the act itself for this particular citation, um, the legal topic, uh, and the trigger event, and the duration of the retention period. Uh, on the right-hand side, we know it's already linked to the Quality 500 retention rule. And again, just like the other tabs on the citations tab, we also have the audit. Now we have some navigation buttons here, so let's use this up. Now we're looking at the citations in full uh, grid view. I selected these eight columns, but just like record series, you can also configure the columns here or select one of our pre-configured views if you prefer. The browser will always remember your last setting. The benefit of having the regulations uh, in the cloud and monitored by our team is you'll receive the change notifications if anything changes to that regulation. Important change means it may actually affect the retention schedule, uh, whereas a minor change is the text edit uh, or something very minor that doesn't actually affect uh, the retention period and your retention schedule. So I'm in here now looking at this directly through Virgo, but you can also subscribe and get an email notification of any changes, new acts that have been added, and also acts that have been repealed. Uh, and in this case, I'm just looking at 102 citations in this particular demonstration. Uh, we do have over 180,000 in the master uh, legal research database. And again, full text searching works. We can see I've isolated these by searching on highway. You can also sort any of these columns by clicking on it. So the other tab we didn't look at is the dashboard, and this kind of gives you the highlights of your system. We're constantly adding uh, new dashboards. We can see the latest comments that have come through on any of the tabs, information about unclassified information, and again, the updates to the citations. So now what we're going to do is we're going to transition over to Content Server and see how Virgo acts as the master um, retention policy system, and it populates into other systems, such as Content Server. Alex will now demonstrate how easily Content Server gets Virgo data. Alex has been successfully delivering information technology solutions for several decades. 
With an effective blend of technical and managerial skills, as well as extensive industry experience, Alex has a proven track record of meeting complex business needs. Since 1996, Alex has been affiliated with OpenText, the world leader in enterprise content management products, including OpenText Content Suite. With the retention synchronization module, all the governing data in Virgo are effortlessly and automatically synchronized into OpenText Content Server. Let's take a look at the Recalls Records Management, or RM, classification. Here's the description in Virgo. Hover over the Recalls description to see all of it. And here's the description in Content Server. Here are the data in Virgo. Double-click on Recalls to see the data. We can scroll down to see that retention for Recalls records is five years. And here are the data in Content Server. We can select the Recalls menu property specific function or simply click on custom column file number quality 500. And then we can see the data. We can scroll down to the RSI or Record Series Identifier field. Notice that the RSI code is quality 500. That came from Virgo. Click on View Schedules. In the pop-up window, we can see that the retention years is five. That also came from Virgo. When did this data come from Virgo? Well, close the pop-up window, scroll up, and click the Audit tab. And we can see the history. Synchronized from Virgo events performed by the admin user were done automatically by the Content Server Virgo agent, probably on a daily basis. Your system administrator would have scheduled that agent when the retention synchronization from Virgo module was first installed and configured. Not sure if an RM classification is up to date? You can look at the Virgo data from any RM classification with the view from Virgo function. Let's do it now. Scroll down and we can see that Brendan updated the data on August 19th. If changes were made recently, or you just want to make sure, you can update the RM classification in Content Server with the Synchronize from Virgo function. Let's do that now. Silently in the background and in real time, Content Server connects to Virgo and gets the latest data. This may take a few seconds. You can wait for the screen to refresh itself or click on More for immediate results. OK, we can see that the Recalls RM classification was successfully synchronized from Virgo. All the synchronization results are gray, indicating that nothing has changed. So the Recalls RM classification was already up to date. Let's return. Look, there's a new synchronized from Virgo event. And there you have it. Automatic synchronization from Virgo to Content Search. Wait a minute, do you see what I see? Maintenance? Let's correct the spelling mistake right now. Normally, we would correct it directly in Content Server by changing the ARM classification's name and description. But wait, because Virgo controls the governance data, this must be corrected in Virgo itself. So, we go to Virgo for this ARM classification by selecting View from Virgo. Sure enough, here's that same spelling mistake in Virgo. We'll correct it right here, right now. First for name, OK, the correction is saved, and then for description. OK, that correction is saved. These corrections will be applied to Content Server in the next schedule synchronization, or we can do it right now by selecting Synchronize from Virgo. Click on More to see our results. And sure enough, the name and description were updated. The green synchronization results indicate those changes. Let's return. 
we can see that the name and description for quality 400 are now correct in the RM classifications list. And there you have it. Automatic synchronization from Virgo to Content Suite. Back to you, Brendan. So now we're in Content Server where all the actual documents and records live. Uh, this recall, which was an incident that happened in 2015, has a project area in Content Server Enterprise. And as you can see, there's a number of uh, different documents that made up this project. There's a link to the Citation 573. Um, there's the official report of the incident from 2015 when it actually happened. It happened in uh, June 2015, and uh, the proper regulatory form, Part 573, was completed. Uh, at the time, June 16th, 2015. All of this information, uh, as you see by the icon here, has also been classified uh, using the records management module. So it's currently active record uh, with the quality 500. And as we saw from the synchronization, uh, this RSI and file number detail uh, came from Virgo. I'll just look at the details um, before we go into an actual disposition, and we can see that everything is met for the active stage uh, to run. It's calculated the five years because those records originally came in in 2015, and as of June 16th, 2020, the five years has passed. We're ready to process this. Um, and this can, this also works in, a, in an event-based scenario as well, if that were the case. Um, and this email here, which got filed into Content Server, is what indicated uh, the recall project is complete, can now be handed over to records management uh, to run the disposition. Lastly, Robert Ent will demonstrate how eligible records are reliably identified and properly handled with disposition searches and the Records Disposition Approval Solution Extension, or RDA. A renowned implementer of open text records management for content service systems, Rob has over two decades of experience acting as lead consultant on a variety of projects spanning a wide range of industries including financial institutions, oil and gas, and government. His experience extends across the entire application lifecycle as an analyst, developer, architect, team lead, and project manager. As Brendan mentioned in the previous video, um, it's now time to hand it over to records management. And so the first step in, in handing it over to records management is to perform a disposition search. So we already have a disposition search run for us. So we'll head to the disposition workspace um, to take a look at that. So here we see the 2015 recall disposition search. And that disposition search has returned 49 objects, which are the documents and physical box that were in the recall project folder in the enterprise workspace. So as you can see here, we have our PDFs and we also have that one physical object that were returned in our disposition search. So at this point, um, now that Content Server has identified which records are available for disposition, um, we're going to hand that over to the RDA uh, Records Disposition Approval Process to gather up the approvals for this disposition um, and then hand it back off to Records Management for the final step, which will be the destruction of these records. So let's head back up to the Enterprise menu. And we're going to choose RDA Workspace, which is the area which the records managers can uh, manually build um, RDAs for approval. So we'll click on Add New. We'll give it a name. And so this is the recall project. And we will select our disposition as a 2015 recall disposition. And uh, we only have one snapshot, so we'll, it defaults to that. Now, um, I do recall having one physical object in that 
um, disposition search result. And what I actually want to do here is um, I want to create two RDA work packages because the box, the physical objects, um, should actually have one additional prover level to it um, because we need to involve uh, a physical records manager who may be working in the warehouse. So I'm actually going to rename this as a recall project um, electronic records. And you'll see later on, I will build another one that will just isolate our uh, physical object that is also ready for disposition. So I'll click the Create button. And at this point, um, RDA is sucking in the results of our disposition search and building uh, what we call our RDA work package. So here we go. Here's the, here's the result of, of creating the RDA. Um, so we see right now at the top, it tells us what dispositions and snapshot we are uh, building this package off of. We see a workflow status telling us pending, which means that we have not initiated or sent this package out for any approval. And it shows that we have a total of 49 objects um, that are included in this report. So that matches the number that was returned by the disposition search. We have no items excluded and here's our name. Now we have it configured um, so that uh, the approvers have 30 days to do their approvals. And that number can be changed if we need to. And we also have a, a little instruction box here. Um, so these are instructions that would be sent along with the disposition uh, work package to the approver. And so it allows the records manager to provide um, some additional instructions on maybe why they're performing this, this disposition. Um, maybe links to policies and retention manuals that they have in their in use in their organization. Um, and this supports um, something called Markdown, which is um, a, a simple way of, of highlighting some text. So for example, we have a, a double asterisk over here um, around some text, which will make that text bold, um, as well as being able to provide some hyperlinks. Um, next, we have security override. Um, so we're going to leave this enabled and what this feature will allow us to do is it will ensure that whoever we choose as our approvers have the correct content server permissions to see these objects. Um, so, for example, um, when we select our approvers, if there's a user 01 and we chose them as an approver and they didn't have at minimum CC contents to the documents, um, they wouldn't have access to that document. So how could they approve it? So the security override um, when applied is when that user 01 becomes the active approver, RDA will temporarily grant them access to those objects so that they can perform their approval action on it. And then when they become uh, no longer the active approver, we revoke that access and they, it goes back to their whatever access they had prior to RDA giving them that CC contents. So this is a, a nice safety mechanism to make sure that the people we choose can actually see the documents to approve. Now, if, if you choose not to use it, we do have a report um, that you can run to identify any users who you might have chosen that don't have access to the records. Okay, so next, uh, approvers. So um, with the RDA, um, you can choose as many approvers as you like. So one to 101, it really doesn't matter for RDA. Um, so there's no limitation. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to set up a two level approval process. So I'm just gonna start typing here and it dynamically looks up um, users and groups. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to assign my uh, approvers um, for my engineering approvers and for my legal approvers. So those are gonna be two groups to which this work package is going to be assigned. So I see I have my legal approvers and I'm gonna go back here and choose my engineering approvers. And then I just realized, um, you know what, my legal approvers probably should be my final approver after the engineering team takes a look at this. So what I can do is I can actually drag and drop these things and change the order um, rather than having to re-enter that information. Um, I'm going to leave conditioner approvers blank because um, that is related to something we call high risk classifications for which uh, this does not apply. Um, we are not going to auto approve these items. Um, if we selected yes, what would happen is after the final approver submitted uh, their work package, um, 
RDA would kick off an automatic delete process um, through the content record server um, records management module. Um, we also have the ability to customize um, buttons and tabs uh, in RDA, um, but this is a destruction RDA, um, so approve for destruction and reject and extend um, is appropriate here. Um, but this basically allows you to customize labels within the RDA interface to make it um, a little bit more clear to your end users what they may be approving because the uh, dispositions are not always just for destruction. It could be a disposition for approval uh, for archive. So changing the button to say approve for archive would be much more informative to a user than just a generic approve or reject. So I'll go here and I'll click save my changes to save all those configuration settings. And then I'll come down here and I see that I have 49 items in my report, um, which is essentially all my PDFs and my one physical object. So what I wanna do is I want to exclude that physical item. Now it's one item, um, so I could have selected it and excluded it manually, but um, we also have these uh, facets that are dynamically built over here on the left-hand side. And so if we had a lot of physical items that we needed to pull out of this report to set up for a different work package, we could have used these filters. So for example, clicking on physical item box um, will change my interface here to show only my box. And that will allow me to exclude that item from my work package. So here we go. Click on my box, exclude it, and we'll clear the filter. And then what we have left is just 48 items that we're going to send out to these approvers. Um, so what we'll do next is we will initiate the sign-off process. And so at this point, um, because we've assigned the RDA work package to groups, every member of that group will receive an email letting them know that they've been assigned an RDA package. Um, but before we get there, I just wanna create one final package off of my disposition search. And so this was my recall project and it was for my physical objects. I'm going to choose the same disposition search and same snapshot. So when I create, Again, RDA is going to suck in my disposition search, but if you notice now that my report items only contain one, which is my physical box. And the reason for that is we've excluded 48 items. And the reason why we've excluded them is because those 48 are already out uh, for approval to a bunch of different users. So we don't allow you to get um, multiple approval packages coming in, which could have conflicting approvals. Um, and then that'll be just difficult to re, uh, reconcile. So here's our PDFs, and you can see that RDA has properly identified them that they're in a different RDA package. So for here, what I'll do is I'll just add um, my engineering. I'll add my oops, add my physical records manager, and again my legal approvers. And in fact, what I'll do is I'll maybe move my physical records manager first, save my changes, and then I will initiate my RDA work package. Great, so when we initiate it, um, RDAs will show up in your initiated tab. And so here we can see both of our, our RDA packages we've created, and we have gonna work through the example of approving these 48. So it has been assigned currently to engineering approver. So I will log in as that user and uh, go ahead and make my approval. So um, I will log out. And here I will sign in as my user 01, which is an engineering approver. And I will have received an email that will take me to a new area called records disposition approvals, which can be found underneath your personal menu. Um, and um, this user is also a member of, of the physical objects group. So that's why I have two recalls in here, but here's my electronic records. So now I'm acting as the user to approve these records. So I click on my RDA work package and what will happen is we'll open up that work package 
and we'll get a little message here saying that you know this package has been offered to a group and one of us in this group has to accept it to uh, to act on it so i will click on accept rda and i will essentially revoke that work package from other members within that group and i now become the sole owner of this work package so here we go we can see we have 48 items that are pending approval um, so the interface is very familiar um, it, we've kind of seen what this interface in the previous screen. Um, it's really easy for end users to approve. Um, you can take a look at here and say, okay, yep, that, that owner's manual is approved for destruction. So we can click the approve for destruction and we'll remove that item from the pending tabs over to the approve for destruction tab. And here's where that customization of the labels come in. Um, so here's the approve for destruction and approve for destruction button and the reject and extend tabs and button. And so that is where we could have customized the labeling to make it a little bit more user friendly if this wasn't in fact a destruction. Um, we also have obviously the capability of bulk approving these. So we can select as many as we want and then approve them. But as an end user, um, you know, we're, we're kind of limited to the amount of screen that we can show um, that has information that we need. So um, there's this more information icon, which will pop up a new window, which highlights to the user um, a summary of information that is found on a bunch of different tabs. So um, general tab is located up here, and then uh, the records detail tab information here, and then the description. Now we also have the ability to show other tabs such as categories, specific and records detail, or the full records detail. Um, but for this example, we'll just use this single window. And what we can do is um, validate the information that we're seeing here is valid and that there's nothing here that would prevent us from destroying this record. And I can click on approve destruction and this window will automatically update with the next record that I have to work through. So I just need to go through here, I'll make this window a little bit bigger, click on approve for destruction, it'll cycle to the next one, and I'm gonna go, okay, yes, this is great. Um, okay, CP5, this one isn't ready for destruction. It was put in here uh, by mistake, it should be in a different folder, so I'm going to reject and extend. And with our reject and extend interface, um, we allow you to customize um, the reason why you may not want to have this destroyed. So I'm going to say it's the wrong classification. Sorry, this file doesn't belong in this folder. Reject and extend. And then it moves on to the next record. So we can see what's happening in the background here is that now, as we were approving and, and rejecting them, the objects were being moved from our pending tab into our approve and reject tab. Um, we also have the capability of requesting feedback, um, which we won't get into here, but we'll, this will allow us to um, ask our um, coworkers their opinion on whether these items should be destroyed or not. Um, but I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna bulk approve the rest of these. And once this is done, we are going to see that all of the objects, whoops, I had multiple pages here, so I have 19. I could have bulk selected across pages, but I didn't. I'll approve the final 19. And beca because I've approved them all, or I've worked through them all, I'm going to mark it as complete, and that will move us to the next approver. So it is now gone from my RDA assignments tab and has been sent to the next group for approval. Okay, so what I'll do here is I'll log out and I will log in as my next approver, which is my legal approver. So again, now this user, um, more appropriately the group, will have received an email saying that they have an RDA package to work on and with a link to this area. So I will go into my RDA work package and uh, just as we saw before, we will have a message prompt that comes up saying that it's been assigned to a group and I need to accept it, which I will go ahead and accept the RDA. And then once I've accepted it, I'll be able to take my actions on it. And so here um, we have the RDA package. Um, if you noticed before, the uh, first approvers had all the items show up in pending. 
Um, but this one had the 47 that the previous approver approved already in their approve tab and the one object that the previous uh, approver rejected already in the rejected tab. And that's because we have a configuration setting in RDA that is called maintain approval state. And so this is to facilitate the approvers down the line to go through and just validate the previous user's choice um, rather than having to start all over again at looking at the pending items. So as the legal approver, I can go through here and validate that they're all good. And if so, then just click on my disposition completed and the RDA package is done. Um, I have the ability to override if I wanted to, to move things back into pending, back from items and approved into rejected. Um, but if everything looks good, it's as simple as clicking a single button. So now we're done. Um, at this point, the records manager will get a notification letting them know that the work package is complete. So I'll log in as my records manager and we'll go to my RDA workspace. And now we can see um, that that electronic record recall project is ready for processing. So let's take a look at that final step. So now that RDA has uh, gathered up all your approvals, um, we can take a look at that snapshot and we have a link to that snapshot right here. And if you're familiar with the disposition searches, um, those two bars, graphical bars up top, um, have been replaced with a list of all the RDAs um, that have been built off of this disposition search. So this snapshot shows that we have two disposition uh, RDA work packages involved, but only one of them has a checkbox here. And that's because that is the one that is complete. So all the records manager needs to do is click on the checkbox and RDA will suck in the approval state for these records and update the information below. So you can see that all the items that were approved receive a checkbox and a status is being approved. And our one item that was rejected um, does not have a checkbox and is clearly marked as rejected. Now, these items are controlled by RDA. So a records manager at this point cannot go in here and try to override. Um, the records manager does have that capability through the RDA interface where things are properly audited. Um, but here we are controlling that aspect to make sure we don't accidentally click on these buttons and destroy things that we shouldn't be destroying. So now that we've just uh, sucked in our approval states, um, all the records manager needs to do is click on perform actions and all the selected items on the entire result set, click OK, and then this will send off this, those items for destruction. And that's it. That's the entire process of letting RDA gather up those approval processes and integrating it with the records management module. If you have any questions regarding our presentation, please feel free to engage with the Cassia team via the chat window until the top of the hour. We will also be available at Cassia's virtual booth immediately following this session, which you can navigate to via the Expo menu in your browser. The virtual booth has some additional recorded sessions with some more technical background along with downloadable material. This video will also be available on Cassie's YouTube channel following the Expo. You can find our channel and learn more about Cassia by visiting our website at www.cassiacm.com or by contacting sales at CassiaCM.com. On behalf of Cassia, thank you for attending our session and enjoy the rest of the expo.